Hey there, welcome to the Darren Marlar Radio Show. If you want to like me, poke me, tweet me, follow me, stalk me, well, you can find links to all of my social media at DarrenMarlar.com. Welcome to the show. Coming up today, uh, it's not often that somebody asks police to arrest him, uh, but Williamsport, Pennsylvania police, they say a 27-year-old guy did just that. That story's coming up in our Brain on Drugs later on. Uh, the C, it just might be watching you. I'll explain about that. Training for what to do in case of a robbery ends up as a moment of duh for one couple. Well, if you want to know how long Grandpa is going to live, check out his pace of walking. Details on that coming up later on. And have you ever been rejected? Well, take heart. It might have made you a better judge of character in the future. Got our weird holidays coming up as well. I'm Darren Marlar, going to start the day off with this story. A man's pants save him from a bullet. Uh, uh, Willie Marbury, he's an innocent bystander waiting for a bus when he's struck by a bullet from a nearby domestic argument. Marbury, thankfully, was okay thanks to the fact that he was wearing three pairs of pants. Police say the 53-year-old man escaped injury because he was so far away from where the gun was shot that the bullet was able to penetrate all three pairs of pants. Or was not able to penetrate, that is, all three pair. In fact, the bullet was recovered from one of his pockets. Now, as for the question that's on everybody's mind, I know, why was he wearing three pairs of pants? <laughs> well, an officer replied, we don't ask those types of questions. Sometimes the answers frighten us. It must be true, cause I heard it on the radio. It must be true, it must be true. Hey there, I'm Darren Marlar. Let's take a look at today's weird, wacky, strange, zany, odd, bizarre, quirky, unusual holidays. Today's Thursday, August 10th. You now have 136 shopping days until Christmas. And today is Improve Your Ice Cubes by Swapping Recipes Day. <laughs> now, this may sound funny to you, but true story, my wife honestly and truly told me once that I was making ice cubes incorrectly. Seriously, apparently I wasn't using enough water. <laughs> uh, today is also National Lazy Day. It's a day to take it easy. One suggestion, uh, don't make anything more complicated than ice cubes. And now another useless fact. Scientists at the University of Saskatchewan, Canada claim that they have found that women sometimes ovulate several times in a single month, which may require the rewriting of medical textbooks and explain why the rhythm method of birth control doesn't always work. Man, this should be fun. I'm ed educating married couples on the importance of abstinence. some weight in your rear end The dress you wear reminds me of my old girlfriend And where'd you get those shoes? I think they're pretty lame Would you stop talking cause I'm trying to watch the game If you're a man who wants to live a long and happy life, these are the things you don't say to your wife I planned a hunting trip next week on your birthday I didn't ask you but I knew it'd be okay Go make some dinner while I watch this fishing show I typed it over our old wedding video If you're a man who wants to live a long and happy life These are the things you don't say to your wife Your cooking is okay, but not like mother makes The diamond in the ring I bought you is a fake Your eyes look puppy, dear, are you feeling ill? Happy anniversary, I bought you a treadmill If you're a man who wants to live a long and happy life These are the things you don't say to your wife If you're a man who doesn't want to get killed with a knife These are the things you don't say to your wife Have you ever been rejected? Well, take heart. It might have made you a better judge of character for the future. I've got details on that coming up for you here in just a bit. Hey, if you'd like a few laughs after the show, you might want to check out my daily dose of weird news. 
I post a new episode every weekday, and you can find that at, dar at uh, DarrenMarler.com. The point is, ladies and gentlemen, that greed, for lack of a better word, is good. Well, Gordon Gecko, he was wrong. Greed is not good, especially if you want to live a long and happy life. Researchers at the University of Notre Dame they reached that conclusion after analyzing the lives of more than 700 ambitious high achievers, many of whom graduated from power schools like Harvard and Yale. Ambitious people do achieve more successful careers, but that does not seem to translate into leading happier or healthier lives, says Professor Timothy Judge. He says despite their many accomplishments, ambitious people end up only slightly happier than their less ambitious counterparts, and they actually live somewhat shorter lives. And he continues on saying, "...the investments they make in their careers come at the expense of healthy behaviors, stable relationships, and deep social networks. If you want your children to lead happy and healthy lives, you might not want to overemphasize professional success." If you want to read that for yourself or a little bit more in detail, I do have a link to that in my blog at DarrenMarlar.com. That's D-A-R-R-E-N-M-A-R-L-A-R.com. You found… You have brought, brought the disaster down upon us! The Darren Marlar Radio Show. I'm a sad little man. I love this itch. Office workers who are depressed, they are twice as likely to call in sick and miss work as their happier colleagues. This report brought to you by the Labs of Studying the Obvious. If you'd like to be a part of the show, I would love to get an email from you. I might even share it on the air. You can email me at DarrenMarler.com. Well, have you ever been rejected? Well, you know you can take heart in that it might make you a better judge of character from now on. A Miami University study it finds that being rejected by peers, friends, or family members it may give people the added advantage of spotting a fake when they encounter one. The study shows the people who have faced rejection they have an enhanced ability to determine whether the happy face in front of them is a genuine happy face. Researchers found subjects who were manipulated to feel rejection they were able to distinguish a fake smile from a real, from a real one nearly 80% of the time. According to researcher Michael Bernstein, real smiles are incredibly difficult to fake because a real smile is an automatic response to a positive feeling. He says if you can tell the difference between a real and a fake smile, you can identify a good person you can relate to while weeding out the trash. Big smile. Big smile. Big smile. Big smile. Turns out there is a shortage of anesthesiologists in America. So much so, in fact, that hospitals are asking colleges to encourage students to step into the field. In the meantime, surgeons are making do by putting patients to sleep with recordings of the Darren Marlar radio show. Today's birthday wrap-up for Thursday, August 10th, celebrating birthdays today from Law & Order and Rizzoli and & Isles, Angie Harmon is 45. From The Mask of Zorro, Spy Kids, Once Upon a Time in Mexico, also the voice of Puss in Boots in Shrek movies, Antonio Banderas is 57, and from Desperately Seeking Susan and the Whole Nine Yards, actress Rosanna Arquette is 58. One Alaskan bridegroom, Kelly, he gave his wife to be the ultimate gift on their wedding day, a chance to hear her late son's heartbeat. I love this story. Becky Turney, she left an empty seat for her late son, Tristan Green, at her wedding ceremony, having no idea that her husband-to-be would ensure that her late baby boy would be there to share their big day in more than just spirit. Kelly contacted Jacob Kilby, the man who received the boy's heart transplant, and invited him to the wedding to stand in as an honorary groomsman. What an amazing story. If you want to uh, read the entire uh, story in detail, you can find it in my blog right now at DarrenMarlar.com. Definitely worth the read. It'll, it'll give you a warm feeling for the rest of the day. DarrenMarlar.com. D-A-R-R-E-N-M-A-R-L-A-R.com. Well, if you want to know how long Grandpa is going to live, check his pace of walking. A report in the Journal of American Medical Association they found a strong correlation between walking speed and expected survival rates for people over the age of 65. The analysis from nine studies showed faster walking speed among older adults 
was associated with increased length of survival. This does not bode well for me. I'm only 49 years old. I'm already getting lapped by ladies using walkers. I used to be with it. Then they changed what it was. Now what I'm with isn't it. And what's it seems weird and scary to me. It'll happen to you. Training for what to do in case of a robbery? It ends up as a moment of duh for one couple coming up. Today's question impossible, what is a pregnant goldfish called? What is a pregnant goldfish called? I'll have the answer for you coming up here in just a bit. Hey, by the way, you can keep up with everything I do by signing up for my free newsletter. It's the Marler Sheet. You can sign up for it at DarrenMarler.com. Training for what to do in case of a robbery? That ends up as a moment of duh for one couple. Hey, I'm Darren Marlar, and a 72-year-old Melbourne, Florida woman, she was accidentally shot by her husband during a robbery drill that the couple staged to practice how they would respond to an intruder. The Brevard County Sheriff's Office said Arnold and Patricia Morris, they had very little experience with guns, big surprise, and the shooting was clearly accidental. Arnold Morris called 911 after the 380 caliber pistol fired and his wife was airlifted to the hospital for surgery. The two were fortunate to escape serious injury. Patricia Morris was expected to make a full recovery. Duh. Hey, if you'd like to get social with me, you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Anchor.fm, Minds.com, LinkedIn, Instagram. You can find links to all of my social media at DarrenMarler.com. Well, it turns out I don't want to scare you, but the sea might be watching you. By training fish to spit at photos of human faces, a new study has found that one species of tropical fish has the ability to distinguish one face from another. The study discovered archer fish are able to recognize faces with a pretty decent amount of accuracy. The fish were able to spot the right face 81% of the time, and their accuracy improved to 86% when the researchers used a set of black and white images. So, archer fish are racist. Say what? How did this delightful chance encounter go south so quickly? The Darren Marlar Radio Show. I'm suffering for what you've done to this town. That is not fair. Hey, if you miss any part of my show, you can catch up with me at DarrenMarlar.com. Well, the day is quickly coming. August 21st, the big solar eclipse and rural towns in the path of the eclipse, they are bracing for a flood of smartphone-toting visitors. And, well, here we are. We're in an era of Instagram and Snapchat, live streaming on YouTube and Facebook, so though all of these people are almost certainly going to want cell phone service, right? Well, that could be a problem because cell service basically doesn't exist in a lot of these small towns along the route of the solar eclipse. So, in response, all four nationwide carriers – AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile and Sprint – they're addressing this problem by rolling out surge capacity. The mobile sites are all designed to do one thing particularly well – boost wireless capacity, in some cases by more than 300 percent. All of this for a single moment in history. Uh, yeah, I guess this big solar eclipse thing is kind of a big deal. Uh, anyway, if you want to read a little bit more about that, uh, you can find it in my blog at DarrenMarler.com. Well, scientists that have found a way to grow human tissue on apples. Kind of freaky. I'll also be looking for greeting cards saying, you're the apple of my earlobe. What's funny? The Darren Marler Radio Show. Where's the banter? I heard there was going to be banter. Sign up to get Darren's newsletter on his website at DarrenMarler.com. Thank you very much. You know, it's not often that somebody asks police to arrest him. Well, Williamsport, Pennsylvania, they say that 27-year-old Patrick McCarty did just that. Our Brain on Drug story is on the way. Today's question impossible. What is a pregnant goldfish called? Well, it's called a twit. It has nothing to do with Twitter, and if I was a goldfish, I'd be a little offended by that. Who is that boring twit? And now another useless fact. In 1994, two men broke into the National Gallery in Oslo and stole a version of Edvard Mo uh, Monk's The Scream. They left a postcard that read, Thanks for the Poor Security. And it's great to see that even some criminals have good manners, isn't it? This is your brain on drugs. <laughs> 
Well, it's not often somebody asks police to arrest him. Williamsport, Pennsylvania police say 27-year-old Patrick McCarty did just that. McCarty allegedly told police he wanted to be arrested for being stupid. <laughs> when police told him that that wasn't a crime, he took police to his apartment and handed over marijuana and drug paraphernalia. Well, that was enough. McCarty's being held now in lieu of $10,000 bail on drug charges. This is your brain on drugs. <laughs> Any questions? Welcome to the Darren Marlar Radio Show, and we haven't done this one in a while, Soul Glow. Some stories that I just find special, heartwarming. Runner Jesse Orak. He collapsed short of the finish line at the Beach to Beacon 10K race in Maine recently. He said, it kind of seemed like it was over for me. Then I felt someone pick me up. A rival runner, Robert Gomez, helped Orak to his feet, and together they crossed the finish line. Then Orak collapsed again. Gomer told reporters he ran a better race. He gave it more than I did. I didn't deserve to win. I couldn't leave him there. The touching moment was captured by news reporters and photographers, and Gomez and Orek both had the same time – 31 minutes, 31 seconds. Orek later explained that he had suffered a heat stroke with his core body temperature peaking at 107.3 degrees. Just let your Hiro Nakajima, the actor who stomped in a rubber suit to portray the original 1954 Godzilla, has died. He was 88 years old. He'll be cremated using hot breath from a giant lizard, then be put out to sea and come back again 52 times. If you'd like to listen to shows from the past, you can uh, download my free mobile app. Just search for Marler House in your phone app store. It's good for iOS and Android. Just search for Marler House, M-A-R-L-A-R -A -A House in your phone app store. I'm Darren Marler, and U.S. soldiers, they are going to extremes, taking diet pills and laxatives, even starving themselves and getting liposuction. Why? Well, to meet the military's weight standards, according to the Army Times. More than a third of uniformed men and women, they don't meet the Army's weight standards, according to a recent military fitness report, and those officers are subjected to dreaded tape measurements to determine body fat percentage. If soldiers exceed the body fat limits, they can't earn leadership roles or promotions. Then aren't most of our soldiers using technology nowadays, though? I mean, like flying drones, navigated missiles and rockets. I say forget the weight limits. We should be going after the fat slobs living in their parents' basements that spend all their time on Halo and World of Warcraft. <laughs> Good night, ladies! Good night, sir! Hit it, sweetheart!